Welcome to the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Reynolds. This is Season 4, Episode 24 of the podcast. The topic of this week's newsletter is Tango. If you've never heard of Tango, it's a Google extension that automatically creates step-by-step guides with screenshots and directions in seconds. No more making documents yourself. You can use Tango to save time in your teaching. In TikTok Tech, at Oxy.Crypto has a video demonstrating a website that will easily turn a YouTube video into a GIF. In Tech Refresh, at EduTechCoach on TikTok will demonstrate a website that provides more emojis and symbols than a traditional keyboard. And we've got a lot to get to, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive in. Welcome in. Uh, this week's newsletter, the same as most weeks, we've got the TikTok Tech, we've got Tech Refresh, and then we have the main idea, Tango. But there's not too much to demonstrate with Tango. It is very straightforward, very simple. So I think this podcast this week might be a little bit shorter than normal. So if you have some extra time on your hands, that's going to be amazing. So without further ado, let's dive into TikTok Tech. TikTok Tech this week, we have a video from at oxy.crypto and they have stopped showing videos on their site, evidently. It, it, their videos are too controversial, so they have shut down their site. Now the video is still available and, and the videos on their site are still available, but they said that it is just, it's too controversial so that they have stopped posting videos on their site. So I'm hoping that this video will stay up. If not, I'm going to demonstrate how it works anyway. So they have a tip on how to turn I'm not going to say any YouTube video, but most YouTube videos into a GIF just by typing GIF at the front of YouTube. Let me show you how that works. So I'm on uh, YouTube right now. I have a video pulled up. This is my video. I'm going to go to the URL up here in the top and I'm going to just type the word GIF in front of the word YouTube. So I have typed GIF. I'm going to hit enter. What it does is it takes me to a secondary website that will then generate a GIF based on my video. So it takes a little bit of time to render the video or put the video into whatever program that they're using on their website. But then you can take a specific clip of this video and turn it into a GIF that you can then share out anywhere else. So depending on how long the video is, the time it takes to render that video on the site might be a little bit different. So I'm in the website right now. I have to pick a start time. Let's just pick my start time to be right here. That's wonderful. It'll give you a little bit of a walkthrough on how long and how to use the site a little bit. So you can see this is the gift that I want. If I don't like this site, I can certainly, um, this part of the video, I can easily move my timestamp around and pick a part of the video that I want to use, right? Now, all of this looks very similar, um, but down at the bottom here, I can actually pick a start and an end time, and I can turn on a not safe for work button here as well. I'm gonna skip this. So I have my little section set up. I can add a caption if I want to add a caption. So I click on the caption. You can see here I can change my border size, the color, what I want to say, all of those things. I can go back. I can insert an image if I want to add another part of an image into here. Maybe we want something to explode. I can drop that in somewhere. So I've got a caption. I've got an image that I've dropped in. So a lot of different items that you can add into this GIF. I can blur part of it as well. I can crop, add some padding, add some hue. So you have a lot of choices and ways that you can manipulate the GIF. Um, and then they have a couple of other tools as far as like ping ponging back and forth and warping the, the video a little bit as well. So you can see here down at the bottom, um, I have some options. I can get rid of some of these things too. So if I want to edit them or I want to delete them, I can easily delete any of the images that I add or any of the captions that I add on top. So when I'm done, All I'm going to do is I'm going to click create GIF in the top right hand corner. I can give the GIF a title. I can again, turn on the not safe for work, turn on sound or uh, turn off the watermark. I can add any tags that I want. I can make it public or private. I'll just leave it as is. I click next and then it always asks me because I'm not premium, I'm just using the free version. Do you want to access? No, I, I don't, this is good enough. So it's going to take a minute and then it's going to generate my GIF. It has generated the GIF for me. So you can see here that I can share it on a bunch of different places, all kinds of different social media websites. Um, Here is the optimized link for Facebook. Here is a direct link to the GIF. And then I can also embed this GIF anywhere that I want to as well. I can choose to download or remix it. I can resize and compress if I want to. And then if I want to save this to use later, all I have to do is log in and then this GIF will be taken to my dashboard, which I can then access later and share wherever I want. When I'm done, 
I just click on create GIF and I can start a new GIF. So the website is GIFs.com. If you want to go there specifically, you can. Otherwise, just type the word GIF in front of YouTube and you can create a GIF and change that YouTube video. Pick any three seconds or five seconds or whatever it is of that video and generate your own GIF. Now that we've talked TikTok tech, let's do a little tech refresh. In Tech Refresh this week at EduTechCoach on TikTok, they provided a video, CoolSymbol.com is the website they are demonstrating. And what CoolSymbol.com does is it gives you more emojis and symbols that you can use more than just what you would get on a traditional emoji keyboard. And then you can use those emojis or those symbols in your rich text format areas and just add them anywhere that you need to. So find the symbol that you want, you click on it, it automatically copies to your clipboard, and then you paste that wherever you need it to be. This is the website coolsymbol.com. So I just scroll down and I can I can search for anything at the top if I want to. But if I scroll down, let's say um, I want to use this scissor. I like this. I don't want the lower blade. I want this blade right here. So I click on the blade. It has been copied. I go back to another text box. Let's just use the one here in my uh, on my newsletter. I'm going to paste this in, and there you go. There are the scissors that I pulled off of coolsymbol.com. Also on coolsymbol.com, you have an emoji tab, a text art tab, a f and a font changer tab. Coolsymbol.com, a great resource to use if you are looking for extra emojis or symbols to use in any text box. Now that we've covered TikTok tech and tech refresh, let's get into our main idea this week, and we are talking about Tango. When I saw this on social media here recently, a few different content creators have shown this website, and it is amazing. It captures your step-by-step -step directions automatically with screenshots and typed directions. So instead of you having to take your own screenshots and build in your own document using Google Slides or Google Docs or Word or PowerPoint, whatever program you're using to create something like this, step-by-step -step directions, Tango is going to do that for you automatically. It's great because after you're all done, you can edit your workflow with text descriptions. You can resize or blur different parts of your picture annotations and then annotate right on your screenshots. When you are all done, you can share your finished product through a link, you can download it, or you can embed the document on some website uh, or within any other learning management system. It's amazing. I'm gonna show you how this works. Uh, on the right-hand side next to the video, the video is just a quick little walkthrough uh, of what Tango is. On the right-hand side next to the video, we have a link to Tango uh, based on their logo. And then right underneath that is a link to their extension, which is what you install into your browser to use the website. Here is the Tango Screenshots Training and Documentation extension. I already have it installed in my browser. You can also see the video is right here as well on their extension page. When you click on the logo, it takes you right to the Tango website and will give you a little bit more information. I do recommend creating an account in Tango. It's free. Uh, there is a paid version of Tango, but the free version should work for anything that you need. But I do recommend creating an account so that you can then save your workflow. Um, and it takes just seconds to create an account. To get started using Tango, I have the extension installed. You'll see it up in my extension bar. It is the orange circle with the T. I'm going to click on that and then you'll see a purple button and it will say capture your workflow. I am going to capture my workflow and I'm just going to show you how to insert word art. In the bottom left hand corner, you will see a green check mark. This will show you all of the steps that you go through to demonstrate whatever you are trying to showcase. When you're all done, you click the green check mark. I'm gonna hover over that and it will show you a few other things. I can pause my workflow if I want. I can restart the workflow. If I pay for the pro version, which I'm just going to show you the free version because honestly, from what I've used, the free version is plenty. And then you have to move things right or left. So really all I've ever used with Tango is I've just used the complete version. I just, I complete what I wanna show and then I click the green check mark and then I edit whatever I need to after that. So I'm going, going to showcase here how to insert word art. So I'm in my Google slide and you can see the orange outline every time I kind of hover over something. So the first step is to insert. I'm gonna click on insert. I'm going to go down to word art. I wanna make sure the whole button for word art is highlighted. I click on word art. I'm going to type word art. I'm going to hit return. I have word art in here. I'm going to go up to my fill color choose orange. I'm going to go up to my border color. Let's click blue. I'm going to change my border weight. I want to get the orange box around border weight. Let's change it to size eight. Sounds great. Go to my format options. I'm going to add a drop shadow and I'm going to add a reflection. 
Now that I'm all done, I'm going to click on the check mark to complete my workflow. So you can see it's working through the workflow. It will give me a title workflow with Google. I'm going to change that to insert word art in Google Slides. And then you'll see the first step here is go to the newsletter, which I don't want to do. I'm just going, let's just delete that step. Very simple. We'll get that out of here. Then the first step here, as you scroll down, will be to insert. And it highlights exactly where you need to go. Highlights the word insert. Again, it has an orange box around everything, but it did highlight the word insert. So that's going to be good enough for me. Scroll down, click on word art. Now, this isn't exactly how I want it. I actually want to capture the word word art. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on add step right above it and I'm going to do capture step. Now right underneath this capture, it says all newly captured steps will be in inserted into this workflow. Where do I want to start to capture? And it, this is the current tab. I want to go to my Google Slides tab. Right here, I'm going to click on insert, right? And I'm going to hover over that. And then I want to hover over the word word art. So let's see if it completed that. I have two steps. It's going to go back to my workflow. I scroll down to make sure it actually captured exactly what I want. There, I got it. So I'm going to delete this word insert, delete this step. So I have my original step. And now I have this step here that I have for the word art. And as I scroll down through, click on word art, I can actually delete this step. Or before I do that, I can change this to type a word. Now it says type word art. So if I want to, I have this step, I can delete this step. You kind of get the idea. Now the great thing here is as I scroll down a little bit farther, you can see right in here, it says click on the drop down trigger. But I don't want this to say drop down trigger, I want it to say click on solid fill drop down. That sounds great. And then in my description, because I can add a, a deeper description on this, I will say something like this is the color that will fill your word art. And then I have a description. So you kind of get the idea. I'm going to scroll down. I'm not going to fix the rest of this because it would kind of take too much time. You get the idea over on the left hand side, you'll see all of the different steps. I have 11 steps because I have deleted some. When you are happy with everything that you've done, you go ahead and you click on share and export. And then in here is how you can share it. I can add an email. Anyone with the link can view so I can do a little drop down or I can do only invited users. Copy the link on that. Here is my magic copy. This is the copy and paste this workflow into any product that supports HTML. So you can watch the magic go to work here. So I can copy the clipboard. Here is a download version of this. So I can download a PDF and put the PDF anywhere I like, or I can get an embed code and embed this wherever I like. Again, just click on the share. I can copy the link. The link has been copied to my clipboard and I can insert this link anywhere that I need to insert or any way that I need to share out this document. One thing I want to show you before I'm all done, if you click on your image, you can click on the little pencil and edit the content. And then in the content is where you can do a few more things. So if I wanted to add a blur, I could add a blur. So let's say I want to blur this area of the image. That's a quick little blur. I can annotate and then from here I can add a, an arrow. I can add a rectangle and ellipsis or I can add text on top and I can choose what line color I want. So I can manipulate the color specifically to what I want down here or they do give me some preset colors as well. So I can change my arrows and then I have some annotation going on. I can also crop my image if I don't want to have the exact full screen of my image to show. When I'm all done, I can just click the save button or I also do have the undo button or I have the reset button in the top corner. So I'm just going to click cancel because I like things as they are. And then I can head back to my uh, workflow desktop. When I'm all done, I can just go to my clipboard. So now I'm on my clipboard. These are the workflows that I have already previously created. Here is the new one that I just made and you can see kind of the applications that you're working with and that um, you want to share out. So if I need to, I can just click on the little sleeping snowman and I can share an export, copy the link, star the workflow, make a copy. Many things I can do to organize my workflow and share out my workflow. And essentially, that's all you need to really know about Tango. It's very simple. Once you install the extension, click on the extension in the top corner, go ahead and create your workflow, edit the workflow as you need to, 
and you're done. The last link that is available in the newsletter this week is a link here on how to use Tango's features. When you click on the link, it actually is a Tango workflow that you can look at that they have created on how to use Tango. So if the video wasn't enough and you want some written step-by-step -step directions, they have how to use Tango in a, an embedded website that you can go through and you can look at uh, and work through for yourself. I just think this program is amazing. I think it has so many applications for teaching students or teaching professional development, just sharing easy written directions with screenshots. And it's so fast because in the past, you had to take the screenshots yourself, type out the directions, put them all into some program that took a long time to actually create. With this, as you're clicking, it's recording your screenshots and all the text exactly as you need to uh, provide it to anybody. So tango.us is where you need to go. Just an amazing program. That's it for this episode of the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I really appreciate you listening to the podcast or watching the video version on YouTube because I know your time is valuable. Please check out the resources for getting started with Tango, the step-by-step -step screenshot maker. Please check out all the resources for getting started, editing your workflow, and sharing your workflow. In TikTok Tech, at oxy.crypto has a great video demonstrating a website that will turn part of your YouTube video into a GIF. In Tech Refresh, at edutechcoach on TikTok demonstrates a website to help you maximize emojis in your text fields. For more EdTech resources, you can follow me on social media. You'll find me on Twitter, at Reynolds Troy, on Instagram, and TikTok, at Ed Newsstand. If you're listening on any podcast platform and would like to hear more, please like and subscribe to receive updates and have any new episode automatically downloaded for you. You can also revisit my previous episodes on any major podcasting platform like Spotify, Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or Google Podcasts. You can also check out the video version of my podcast over on my YouTube channel and check out any of the other video resources I have available. If you'd like to download my app to have my podcast and newsletters right on your smart device, please check it out at ednewstand.gladapp.io and save it to your home screen. If you don't want the app but would like to check out my resources, please visit my website at ednewstand.weebly.com. This is Troy Reynolds, and this is the Ed Newsstand Podcast, hoping you were able to take away at least one idea for your classroom. Please be safe. Until next time.